Hi, welcome to another episode of David Rides a Trike. I'm David, I'm riding a trike. If you've seen my introduction before and would like to skip it, just go down into the description below, that is if you're watching in YouTube, and hit the skip intro link. For those of you joining me for the first time, or one of the first times, I try to provide motivation for people with chronic illnesses and disabilities to find some fun form of exercise to get outside. Why? Because doing so can be therapeutic and doing so turns out to be a lot of fun. Personally, I fall into both the chronically ill and disabled categories. I'm legally blind. I was a type 1 diabetic from the time I was a year and a half old till I was 41 had a pancreas transplant at that time that cured me of being a diabetic. I've had three organ transplants in all, stage three cancer, and a long list of infections, surgeries, and illnesses that is quite extensive. Well, as you may be able to see, the leaves around here are starting to change somewhat. It is mid-October. We're well into fall. And every time I get to this week in October, I'm reminded of a story that happened back in 1988. So, pull up a chair, gather around, and I'm going to tell you a story. On this week, or in this week, back in 1988, a very good friend of ours was getting married. And the woman he was marrying was from New England, and the wedding was being held in Connecticut. So we headed out there, and Debbie and I decided, since we're going out for the wedding, let's make a vacation of it. It'll be fall color season there. Should be really nice. And that's what we did. We made our plans, went to the wedding, and then started touring New England. And it was beautiful. We had a great time, but that is not what this story is about. While we were on vacation, we had made our way up to Kennebunkport, Maine. And each night we were staying in bed and breakfasts. And we had reservations for most nights. This particular night, however, we did not have a reservation. We had read and we were told, <laughs> it's okay. We had read and we were told, and this is before the days of the internet, of course, that there was a great bed and breakfast called the Captain Lord Mansion in Kennebunkport, Maine. And we had tried making reservations there and it was filled. But we figured when we get to town, we'll call and see. So we stopped somewhere that had a pay phone and I called. And I said, just calling on the, on your left. Just calling on the off chance that you might have an open room tonight. And the woman who answered said, as it turns out, I just had a cancellation for tonight. I could give you that room. I said, oh, that would be wonderful. And I said, I'll take it. And this place from the outside at least looked absolutely beautiful. So we headed over there, checked in, and the place was amazing. It was built in the very early 1800s 
and for those of you not in the US, early 1800 buildings are fairly rare around here. But the place was in great shape, it looked beautiful, and we were quite pleased. That night we had dinner, and after dinner, we headed into the uh, a little room where they had a large selection of teas and coffees. So I was looking around, picked out a tea, and started making it, and one of the housekeepers came in and said hi, and we started talking, and she said, what room are you staying in? And I said, the Lincoln Room. And she said, oh, the haunted room. Soon as she said that, Debbie said, the what? And the housekeeper said, yeah, it's a lot of people have said that room's haunted, that they see Phoebe Lord, the original woman of the house, will come and visit the room. Debbie said, okay, we have to find another room. And I said, there are no other rooms. There's no other places to stay. It's not haunted. It's some advertising gimmick. Probably a couple people said something and they use it just to get attention for themselves. And we talked for a while. I was finally able to convince Debbie that we would stay there. So we went up to the room, and the room, by the way, was magnificent. Giant four-poster canopy bed, all antique furnishings. Directly facing the bed was a huge fireplace, and above it, a very large picture of no other than Phoebe Lord and her dog. So Debbie said, okay, we're not turning any lights out. And not only that, she turned on every single light. And she got into bed and I was sitting at the desk in the room where there was a guest journal and I was reading the entries. Phoebe visited us tonight. We've been here for three days. Didn't see anything until the third night and Phoebe came in at midnight and there was page after page of these sightings. There were lots of them where people saw nothing, but there were a lot saying that Phoebe did make an appearance. And it always happened at midnight. So Debbie said to me, what are you reading? And I said, oh, just the room journal. What does it say? Uh, people have had a really nice time here. That kind of thing. Anything about it being haunted? Uh, well, there's a couple people saying that Phoebe did make an appearance, but I'm sure they're just messing around. Well, what do they say specifically? Well, they said that if she does come by, it's always at midnight. And right then, of course, it was 11.30 p.m. On your left. And Debbie goes, you mean half an hour? And I said, yeah, but nothing is going to happen. And I was a little bit excited. Debbie was completely freaked out. 
and we're waiting. We had a fire going in the fireplace. Right at 12 o'clock, there's a tap, tap, tap on the window, one of the windows. Debbie jumps and goes, what was that? And I said, I, I, I think it was the radiator. You know how they are when they start heating up. They'll make banging noises. A few moments later, tap, 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 tap on the outside window. And there was no mistaking. It was on the outside window. Furthermore, we were on the second floor. And Debbie said, don't open, don't open the shade. And I said, well, we've got to see what it is. I open the shade and I look out, nothing there. I look down and there's a couple on the ground waving. And I opened the window so I could hear. And the guy goes, sorry, we left our outside key in the room. They lock the outside door of the bed and breakfast at 10 p.m. You have to have a key to get in. He goes, can you let us in? And I said, well, how do I know you're staying here? And he goes, here, you know, here's our room keys. And he showed us. And I said, okay, I'll, I'll come down and let you in. Oh, and he said to me, sorry, we didn't mean to bother you, but your room was the only one where all the lights were on. So we figured we'd try throwing some pebbles at your windows. So I explained to Debbie what was going on. I said, I'm just going to go down and let him in. And she said, and leave me here? And I said, well, yeah, maybe. And she said, there's no way I'm staying here alone. So she got out of bed. She was fully dressed, so she was ready to go. And we headed down the stairs and let these people in. They thanked us invited us to come see their room, which was beautiful. They asked which room we were in, and I said, the Lincoln Room. And they both went, oh, the haunted room. Would it be okay if we saw it? And I said, sure. And Debbie and I agreed that, you know, that was fine. And they said, we have a bottle of wine, we'll bring it up. Great. So we went up there, the three of us, Debbie abstained drank a bottle of wine, talked, and had a really nice time. They left, and Debbie remained fully dressed, in bed, with every light on for the rest of the night. And that is my autumnal story for you. That is it for this ride. Please like and subscribe. It helps me out a lot. Leave me a comment down below, and I will see you on the next ride. Bye-bye. There was a great bread and... Bread and breakfast.